What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve. I'm Lindsay. Today we're going to be reacting to how black pudding is made in England. This is something I've been wanting to check out for quite some time now. And recently we received quite a few requests to learn how black pudding is made specifically in England. I think most likely because we recently did that... Uh, full English breakfast Yeah, video. the full English breakfast video. Well, it was been about a week or so ago. Mm -hmm. um, but... Neither of us have ever learned how black pudding is made. I think, was that video the first time you'd seen black pudding yeah, on a plate? Yeah. Had you heard about it before? I'd heard of it, but Probably, I didn't know exactly what it was. Have you, and I think I always got haggis and black pudding confused. Right. I think <clears throat> they both use oats, if I'm not mistaken, in, as, a, as like a filler. A base. Yeah. I'm not really sure exactly how that works, which to is what we're going to learn here. Yeah. I'm kind of, honestly, I'm kind of scared to watch this before I try it. But. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at this handle or whatever this is right here, and I'm like, yeah. I must admit that that doesn't look good right there. Um, but you know what? I've heard. Well, I've heard both sides. Some people say they don't like it, but maybe it's kind of like Marmite. It's one of those things that you either love or you hate. There's no middle ground. There's no, ah, it's okay. You either love it or hate it, I'm guessing. Let us know in the comments, guys. But it seems based off of past comments, I've gathered that uh, there. There is no middle ground. Right. It's a love or hate thing here. Yeah. We're in Bury, Lancashire, England, and we're about to visit a black pudding oh. company. Black pudding is that one item in an English breakfast plate that oh. you either love or hate. Why? Because he has... Did she just say that? Yeah. She yeah. literally just said what I think. Took the words right out of your mouth. Yeah, wow, okay. Okay, so far, I'm <laughs> super, super thrilled. You're not super thrilled to try I it? Don't, I don't... Think I could work in that factory and then eat it. Mm. That's all I'm gonna say. Or maybe it's one of those things you might start out being very sensitive to, but once you get into it, you're, you're desensitized. desensitized. <laughs> yeah. Blood in it. <clears throat> but it is also that one item that has the most history, especially here in Lancashire, which is known for being the county that brought it to fame. So it's time to see how it's made. Let's go. In Bury, we met with Richard Morris, production director at the Bury Black Pudding Company. His grandfather was a butcher, and it is his black pudding recipe that the company uses today. People have this idea of black puddings, it's all bits, bits of animals and stuff. There's no meat in the black pudding. Uh, there's, there's blood in the black pudding, but there's no meat, it's cereal based. Black pudding starts with a dry mix of pig blood, seasoning, rusk and oatmeal. And when we say dry, we mean this. Well, Seriously? <laughs> yeah, you'd never guess. It's actually uh, a dried blood. So if you smell that, what yeah, would you... What? It just smells like herb. Wait, that's the blood? I was assuming they actually use Li like... Well, I mean, it starts as liquid, but then it's right, dried out. Undried blood. I, I, that's, that's wild. So I'm <laughs> guessing they, they add... What did they say? They said oats? Or they just Rusk. Did they say oats or did they say cereal? I know he said cereal. Well, cereal is oat. Yeah. Isn't oat cereal? is a cereal. Yeah, but there's other cereals. Rusk is in the Rusk. Cereal. What is rusk? You know, the Farley's rusk. Yeah. Is that what they're biscuits? talking about? It's rusk. Like a... Oh, interesting. All right. So, so they must add some sort of... I wonder what the liquid is to bring that maybe to a... Maybe water. Yeah, maybe. My, my thing is, when it's raw... <laughs> And no. wet, it looks like intestines to me, which grosses me out. But when it's dried and like done, it looks better. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. But I'm curious, are that are they using the traditional method of like to 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 encase this, mm -hmm. or is there some sort of like a more modern uh, casing? Non-animal. Yeah, I'm curious about that. Let us know in the comments if they don't uh, actually tell us what the casing is made mm -hmm. of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It smells yeah. like the seasoning. Yeah, the seasoning. There's no blood. No, no. Any, any blood no, smell it's, at all. it's a nice aroma, and we use dried blood because it's very, it's, it's developed to a, a certain parameter. It doesn't even it's look like blood. Safe, food safe. What is the difference with, uh, with like liquid blood? Um, it's much more consistent using fresh blood that can change with different animals, what they've been fed on. So this is very consistent product which fits what we do. We also have rusk then which is breadcrumbed flour used, oh. used heavily in Bread crumbs. Uh, man, uh, manufacture of sausage. That's mm -hmm. what gives sausage a, a fluffy texture. Oh, I see. And we also have uh, oatmeal as well. 
So oatmeal that's been ground, so, so it's a fine oatmeal, um, and that that again, if you added water to that, it would go a bit stiffer. So the two together make a nice texture. Oh so yeah, because they complement each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think heavily in England, especially north of England, anything that's got lumps in it, you got to bite two or three times. They call it gristle round here. <laughs> so when that sort of sausage is quite firm, that's more European. Around here, uh, especially north of England, it needs to be soft and very palatable. Oh. Oh, huh, that's interesting. So, I guess the, um, the the look of that is kind of why I thought it was liquid blood. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure once they add yeah, it comes out of color. It, yeah, it yeah. Some. That's wild, man. It, it, that's a little more uh, purple than I thought it mm -hmm. was when I've seen it. I mean. Isn't this the final Probably product? Depends on how you. Maybe cook when it. you cook it, that's what I've seen. They've cooked it on a, they and fried it, and it. so it blackened it. I bet. Okay. Okay. Really so that is yeah. a taste. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, yeah, just regional things. Yeah, regional taste. Yeah. Another two ingredients are barley and fat. Unlike the rusk, oatmeal, and blood, they will be cooked before being added to the dry mix. This is pork fat. So if you think of a pork chop, um, where the meat is, the white piece of fat there. Um, this comes in from Denmark, where the fat we have fatter pigs. In England, the pig the fat's like this. So we hmm. don't have fat pigs. So this white piece of fat comes in in strips. I wonder why that is. We have yeah. Does it just depend on diet. Yeah, I know that generally speaking, you know, they fatten animals here with grains, mm -hmm. like even cows. You know, like if you look at the grass-fed cows versus the grain-fed cows, it's you know not as fatty yeah and you look at even the meat the marbling of a steak that is a uh, grain, grain fed yeah. versus grass fed is, is is incredible looking at the difference there mm -hmm. so i don't know why else there would be fatter pigs unless it was based off the grains unless it's a different type of pig maybe i don't know mm -hmm. yeah. oh wow i didn't even notice yeah, that. yeah. It looks wow. like textile. That's you know? it, yeah. So we got a strip there. It's a lot of fat. Well, no, it doesn't and, like meat. And then this goes through, <laughs> this is then diced. Oh. So this is the high quality. There is no lean meat on this at all. Wow. Um, so we're just after the fat. And this so, one is going to be cooked? Yeah. Yeah, we dice it on a machine. We wait into the stocking net again. So we, Ooh, from here, yeah, we take it up from there. And we pop it into that. Here we go. And this one is going to shrink, or yes, it will just shrink slightly um, as it starts to give the moisture out of it and the flavour. Uh, the barley expands. This just reduces slightly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one one net is for one. Into a mix. Uh, there's four nets going to a mix. Okay. Yeah, I'm giving you my recipe right now. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, might have to write this down. Yes. Yeah. No. No. So now I'm curious how, like, when you look at a slice of black sausage, mm -hmm. how much of that is the fat versus the blood versus know, the I've different types of grains? And since it isn't, there's no meat in it, but there is blood. I wonder what the protein content or something like that is. Is it a high protein thing? Is it high fat? Is it high carbohydrate? Is it all three? Mm. You know, I'm really curious what the macros look like or something like this. It sounds like something that would be fairly nutritious though. Barley and fat are cooked for one hour. Meanwhile, wow. onion and water are mixed in this giant container. Onion and water. When onion. ready, they will be joined by the dry mix containing blood, oatmeal and rusk. And then there's a motor on here. Basically, it will just... It's like um, when you whisk something mm. up. But this does it at four and a half thousand reps. Wow. So it just wow. whisks really quick. <laughs> And basically, you rehydrate the product so you've got okay. like a gravy consistency. That doesn't that work. That part, yeah, I don't, I don't want to see the that. Oatmeal, the flour, the onions, oh. and you've got your base mix. This is like, the bar that you saw previously. Oh. If I pick one up, you'll see exactly that the same. From there, see how it's swollen up. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. perfectly. So this one is about, it was like two and a half kilos, two, and yeah, now it it's, is? it's about 10 kilos now. So I see something else in here, though. There's not just barley. But this is uh, fat, diced fat that we, sh we showed you earlier. Oh, wow, that's shrunk uh, down again, quite a bit. Cooked up. If you notice, it's, it's like, not swollen up. Yeah. It's just cooked out, and it actually loses a bit. We only use, in our products, only 3% fat, and those are the actual small white... What? That's what the bits of chunks are. No here. kidding. I thought that was like some sort of grain. I did too. That's the fat. So the that's mm, interesting. I don't know if I'd like that part. Well, I I thought I thought it was like the fat was just going to be like with like mixed in. Like mm -hmm. it's not something you would really see. Right. Like pureed. So what I'm curious about now is like 
when you cook it, I guess that fat doesn't I'm melt. Sure, it, yeah. it, it just stays in its place. So you get these, like, you body, you get these little pockets of fat. Yeah, I don't know if I'd enjoy that part of it. I, I'm curious, though, like, when you cook that, is it, like, a soft fat or is it a chewy fat? You know what I mean? Like, you come across these little bits and pieces of fat. Is well, it like he said at the beginning, I think, that the sausage in the UK is, like, all about the texture softness. Mm -hmm. Whereas in other parts of Europe, it's more chewy. Mm. So I would assume it's soft, but... Um. Interesting. After he missed that onion, I actually thought maybe that was onion as well, but mm -hmm. that's interesting. So the you don't see any of the grain, though, really, do you? No, I, mean, I don't. Maybe maybe the that tiny pieces. right there. and. But yeah, I'm with you. I originally it. thought the big chunks of stuff was grain. Yeah, yeah. Pieces you see in the end product. If you don't want wow. the fat, don't eat the small pieces and you're not percent fat. <laughs> so you can really skip it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Barley and fat are then added into the mix. Fat is mixed gently, not the high shear, to not break the dices. The mix is now ready. Uh. Ah, I don't want to see that. It's so brown. Yeah, it's oh. like chocolate. Yeah, it does look like chocolate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, not <laughs> the word I was thinking, but... but... Yeah, it's uh, not bright red or anything like that. People associate it with blood. It's a, it's a, it's a cereal mix <laughs> with a blood base, so <laughs> it's a chocolatey, velvety sort of touch. The, the end product was better than the yeah. during production. Yeah, Absolutely. Although that kind of looked like um, uh, chili to me a little bit. Like a weird chili. Oh. Don't ruin chili for me, please. <laughs> <laughs> it comes, it comes from the uh, dried blood. Yeah, it like, does, yeah. Is, yeah, yeah that's, that, that's the, main, the, the main part of it. I wonder what it the smells like. The mix is stuffed in a natural casing made of beef intestine. Okay. Beef intestine. Yeah, that's quick. <laughs> so that's the intestine that's been filled out with a mix. This is a portioning control machine, like you see with sausage, uh, sausage fillers. Yeah. And what it's actually doing, it's spinning the product. So it's it's doing that so quick. Oh, okay. You see wow. That, so that you can portion it. It's, and that's one portion that yeah. we then link into a black mm. pudding. There you go. So nice. Yeah. Um, and it's always this shape, right? It's you can't have shape. it as a just a straight. And you can see with the linking, we. I'm really curious what this smells like. There. Yeah. Me and too. Then there. That nobody seems to be. And then there. Like this seems like something that wouldn't smell very good during pro production. Yeah, but doesn't. when she smelled that dried blood, it's, but it's dry. But what you know, like but once you reconstitute it, yeah, it smells totally different. Right, but no one's wearing masks or anything like like it smells bad or something. So I'm guessing maybe it doesn't smell that bad or anything. Probably smells oniony. Yeah, that's true. Onions and herbs. some sort of herbs they're using. It's probably everybody's got their own secret recipe, which is why he didn't mention the herbs and stuff in right. there because he would give away his recipe. Um, I'd be really curious to know what herbs are in here though. Like, you know, is it sagey or is it like, you know, like mm. garlic powder? Like what, what type of stuff's yeah. in this? Okay. And we use the string to tie it up. So one's just been done here. Oh, so, why? Why do you do that? Oh, so you have a nice, so you uh, mean, yeah. It's tied up all the same, same weight. Right through. Well, why do you open up the end there? I don't know. Nice. Nice black color, no? Yeah. <laughs> you will see now when it goes in, it's a grayish look and then it goes black after As cooking. After cooking. Okay. Black pudding. So that's a very traditional process that we still teach that to this day. A uh, hundred year old process, maybe longer. No. Wow. Uh, the touch is that's smooth. Cool. That is wow. cool. That's yeah, that cool. Is very smooth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. smooth. But I just want to ask guys, anybody know, why did he cut that open? I know, it doesn't seem like you would have had to. So I guess this does not come to <clears throat> your house raw. When you buy it, it's yeah, already I'm cooked. Sure. Yeah, and sure. then you just like fry it up, right. you know, or whatever from there. So I guess some people would actually eat this cold out of the fridge. There is no grains at all. No. It's just like when you pass your, silky, your yeah. hands through your hair. Yeah, yeah, it's silky, like that. silky smooth. It's super yeah, smooth, yeah, that yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, what about the uh, casing? Are you the casing can be eaten. It is edible, it's natural. Firstly, I don't. I take it off. Because it's quite thick, it's probably the, the hardest to chew in the product. I like a nice, soft, palatable product. Yeah. So you can easily just peel it off? You can easily peel it off, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. user-friendly. <laughs> then the black puddings are cooked in water for about one and a half hours. Oh, wow. So steam, oh, so basically. One. Yeah, yeah. If you put them into, in one go, 
basically that has the core temperature. If you put them individual, you have to get in the water around it. So we have three or four minutes of loading the cookie time to get, get, mm. get the, uh, the water around the product. The oh, pudding, yeah. it's called a pudding because it's cooked immersed in water. One and a half hours. Yeah, and as the air gets to them, Oh, wow. Okay. That's so cool. Seriously. So this is where the black pudding yeah. uh, name Lights, come from. Yeah. Because it definitely it definitely changed colors on us. I, I do wonder what the inside looks like fully cooked. What I think actually we saw that earlier. Was that where we saw it with the fat pieces with inside after it had been cooked and cut into a slice? I don't know. Oh, it must have been. Yeah, because I you wouldn't if it wasn't already cooked, you wouldn't be able to slice it like that because it would have been it just been gooey. Yeah, gooey. So that's cool, man. All right. It looks much more appetizing like this. Yes. Than yes. in the process. Yes, it does. It, this this looks much better. Cool off. They go blacker and blacker. Hmm. We get down to the temperature of about 40 degrees in about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then we put them onto a rack to cool. Two or three hours later, we're ready to pack them. So these are the black prunes that have been cooled. We just take them off the rack here, put them on the table, and then the staff here will cut the black puddings, cut mm. the string off, oh. so they come in here so they're in single black Oh, wow. Puddings. So here at Brewery Market, you can actually just get black pudding as a takeaway food and yep. have it. Yeah, you have been able to for hmm. years and years. You can go away with a nice hot black pudding with a bit of mustard on or tomato sauce brown sauce. Uh, you can either have it just on its own or you can uh, take it away on a on a bat bread roll. Oh, okay, so, nice. <laughs> on a bread so roll? how long have you been here at the Burry Market? Uh, I've been here since I was 12. Hold on. Hot black pudding. Wow, that's cheap. Is that like a, like, I wonder how much you get for that. Like how, how many slices of it. All this stuff just for black pudding? I guess so. Look, like, I don't see any other stuff being sold here. Well, I mean, the name of it is black pudding. right right that's wild that man. seems cheap that does seem cheap i would figure for as intense as the labor process is it would be more expensive i feel like it would be much softer than our sausage yeah. that we have i must admit that is something that i don't know if i would like the softness yeah yeah i'm not a, i'm not a fan of soft textures when mm -hmm. it comes to food like um i i, I generally you like a little bite little bite crunch, crunch chewy <laughs> yeah. what does black pudding mean to blurry especially because it is it is used like all over england but here specifically there is quite a strong black pudding like feeling culture, yeah no? the story goes that the black pudding originated in europe and the, the monks came uh over to england and settled in berry uh so it's always traditionally been known as as the capital of black pudding no, oh, the season is so good. It adds flavor, but it doesn't mm -hmm. overpower the rest. Yeah. Texture is well and nice and creamy. I would not never say that there is blood in here. But if I were to look at this, I would probably think it's just chocolate mousse. <laughs> so yeah, it's chocolate, chocolate cake. sausage. All right, guys. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> she said mousse, so it does seem like it would have a very soft texture. Yeah, she said that it was soft. Mm -hmm. uh, or did she say creamy? Or how did yeah. she describe that? Um, that's definitely not... When I think of sausage, or yeah. like a... It's not meat, but like a breakfast type yeah. sausage. We will definitely give this. Oh, well, I I think you'll give it a go. Won't you give I'll it a go? Try it. Yeah. You know, obviously, we're only going to do this in like when we can get it. You know, traditional house, traditionally made, like here, right. like in I'm England, for example. Sore. Yeah, I, I would not eat this out of a can. I don't even know if they put it in cans. Probably not, but. Um, I wouldn't eat something like this out of a can. I wouldn't eat something like this that was made in the U.S. because mm -hmm. it wouldn't be the same. Right. Um, but I will give it a go one day. Yeah. But I must say I am the the, <laughs> the texture. Yeah. Is what really gets me because I am not a fan of soft like creamy uh, texture when it comes to like meat and stuff like that. Yeah, which um, it isn't meat. But no. That's the thing I think of when I think of yeah, meat. like. I don't know what what is this made of more? Is it more blood or is it more uh, grain? Yeah, I feel like it's maybe, maybe half and half. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm sitting here, you know, like how much of this was blood? Well, obviously, we can tell how much of it was fat now. Mm-hmm. But it knowing that that's fat. If you eat this whole slice, it seems like this is going to be a fairly rich. Thing, something Calvary that gents meal. yeah something that you would like you'd be pretty full once you got done with a mm -hmm. slice you know but i'm curious like they comes with sauce too so do people just like dip this i don't know, I don't know. put it on it as so, a sandwich yeah yeah i know like 
This seems like, after seeing this, it seems like something that people might use a thin slice on top of a sandwich. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think, I'm thinking on top of some sort of beef or something like that. I don't know, though. Who knows? Like a burger? A burger with blood pudding on top? Think, I'm sure it, I'm sure it exists. Yeah. I don't know. Now, let me ask you, after seeing the process of how this is made, mm -hmm. it are, is your opinion on how you would feel about it going into trying it, is it better or worse? I would say it's neutral. I don't think it's worse or better. It's honestly not a food item that I would be particularly excited to try, but... You know, I understand why it came about and the reason and how important it was, especially back in the time it was created. So I can respect that part of it. But I'm just, from my American perspective, not growing up eating it, it just doesn't seem like a necessary thing for me to seek out and, like, eat on a regular basis. Right, you know what right, I mean? Right, So if you do, if someone eats this on a regular basis, it must be because they really think it's delicious. Yeah. Um, I, I appreciate how, you know, this is using something that most, you know, let's be honest, most people throw away <laughs> in terms of blood. Like if you hunt your own animal, very few people actually like, for example, you go hunt a deer, very few people actually keep the blood. Also, I think that's a good point too of why it, makes me a little more squeamish about it is that it's pork. Pork blood. Yeah. For yeah. some reason, to me, it just is a little more off-putting than if it was like... Beef blood. Yeah. 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 I, I, I agree with that. Like, I wonder if there's a reason why they use pork blood specifically instead of other... Or do they actually use other blood? Do they use beef blood on some... Yeah. Are there other types of black pudding? Or is there something about pork blood that because it's pork actually gives more of the flavor of a sausage that you wouldn't get because Probably. when do you see beef sausage? Yeah. You know, you don't, you know, there's, there's, there's something about pork products that are very, uh, graphics oriented. Yeah. And I, and I feel the same way about this. I'm sure people eat it other times of the day, but this seems like a very breakfast oriented food, just like yeah. sausage does. Um, you know, some people I know do eat sausage for lunch or dinner or whatever. I, that's never really been something I've done. Mm -hmm. But for me, I would say I actually, this was a very positive experience looking at it as a, as something uh, for when I try it in the future. Like now seeing how it's made and, and, and just seeing that process really, it, it takes away certain, you know, things I was Visuals curious about. And like, because like when you picture it as liquid blood, just yeah. there is a little more. Even as someone who likes like, uh, you know, more on the pink or medium rare side of steaks, don't like well done steaks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, still like thinking about just blood itself. If I was drinking it or something, even though some people around the world yeah. do that, it's something that, you know, personally that is a little bit off putting for me, but this, yeah, I, I can see how this might be good. I don't I know. Try it. We'll, we're going to give it a go. Let us know in the comments what you think about it. Um, and, and we really want to know, like, what is that texture like? What was the best way you could describe that texture for us to understand what maybe, it is? Maybe, like she said, maybe moose is the closest texture. I think this is going to be one of the most unique things I, I've ever tried. In my, I can't think of anything more unique than that that I've ever tried before. Can you really? I mean, haggis is probably a good... You haven't tried haggis? I haven't. I haven't tried this either. I know, but... But I'm saying like, those yes. two things are probably... I agree. The quintessential things I think of when I think of... Very unique foods. Yeah, that, very unique food items. Yeah, yeah, me too. So, should be interesting, guys. But, uh, yeah, let us know what you think about black pudding. And, like we said, what the texture is and what's the uh, type of herbs they generally use. Like, is this more of a sage, you know, or do you taste a lot of the garlic and onion... Like how's, you know, what's the flavor really of this? Yeah. And uh, yeah, but thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow us on our journey to discover anything and everything from the UK and Ireland. Until next time, guys. Peace. Bye.